infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, mosquito-borne diseases. Yeah, most of us know about dengue, malaria, and West Nile virus. But there's probably some of us that don't know anything about Japanese encephalitis, or JE. Joining me today from Geneva to discuss JE is vaccinologist and public health physician and returning guest, Melvin Sanicus, MD. Dr. Sanicus, welcome back to the show, sir. Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me back on your show. You bet. So, Dr. Sanicus, what is Japanese encephalitis, and is there, what can you tell us about its history? So, Japanese encephalitis, or JE, is an infection of the brain caused by the Japanese encephalitis virus. The virus is found in pigs and birds and is passed to mosquitoes when they bite infected animals. It does not spread from person to person. So, the virus was initially isolated in Japan in 1935, hence the name Japanese encephalitis. Um, the virus is also the leading cause of vaccine-preventable encephalitis in Asia and the Western Pacific, with up to 70,000 cases reported every year. Now, this is a mosquito-borne virus. Um, what uh, species of mosquitoes transmit this virus? Yeah, uh, the Japanese encephalitis virus is a flavivirus related to dengue, yellow fever, and West Nile virus that you mentioned earlier. And all of these are spread by mosquitoes, uh, but the main difference is that JE is transmitted mainly, primarily by Culex species of mosquitoes. Yeah, and, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Dengue, uh, yeah, and dengue is uh, a different, it's, it's usually ABs. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it's uh, predominantly found in Asia. Um, is there any countries that it's specifically hard hit by Japanese encephalitis? Well, yeah, actually, a lot of countries in, in Asia Pacific and in the Western Pacific um, are considered endemic for JE, uh, around 24 countries, I think. The first clinical case of JE was recorded in 1871 in Japan, but the virus has since spread to other parts of Asia and in the Western Pacific. And despite the name Japanese encephalitis, actually, it's now relatively rare in, in, in Japan. But transmission occurs mainly in agricultural locations where flooding irrigation is practiced. So those most at risk are people living in these areas. Right. So the people most at risk um, are, uh, it's, you said pigs, so is it linked to farmers? Yeah, so farmers, uh, uh, people who work with pigs and birds and rice fields. Yeah. Um, Dr. Sanicus, what is the pathology of JE infection? So, most people infected by the Japanese encephalitis virus have either no symptoms or mild short-lived symptoms, which are often mistaken for flu. But around one in every 250 people who become infected with JE develop more severe symptoms, especially when the infection spreads to the brain. So when the brain becomes inflamed, symptoms might, may include headache, fever, vomiting, confusion, and seizures and up to one in every three people who develop those more serious symptoms will die as a result of the infection. And those who survive will continue to suffer from neurological problems such as weakness, recurrent convulsions, or language problems. Yeah. So a case fatality rate somewhere in the ballpark of 30%? 30%. Yeah. Right. Um, now, unlike many of the mosquito-borne diseases, um, there is actually a vaccine for JE. Can you talk about that? Yes. Uh, the first Japanese encephalitis vaccines actually became available in the 1930s. And at the moment, there are over 10 different vaccines for Jap Japanese encephalitis. Some of them are based on recombinant DNA technology. Some of them are based on weakened virus, others inactivated virus. And these vaccines are relatively safe and effective, usually over 90% effective against Japanese encephalitis infection. Yeah. Now, is it typically, is this vaccine typically on the vaccination schedule in these endemic countries? 
Well, it is recommended as part of the routine immunization um, program in countries where the disease is a problem. In other countries, it is recommended by medical societies, but not really in the country's immunization program. So it really depends on the burden of JE in a particular area. Um, uh, so actually, there there are vaccines for pigs as well, and vaccination of pigs represent another strategy, but it is not widely used because of the high turnover in pig population, which would require annual vaccination of newborn pigs, which would be which would be very expensive. Right, right. And uh, last question, um, travelers to these areas of the world, um, should they be vaccinated against JE? Well, for most travelers to Asia, the risk for JE is low, but it really varies based on the destination, the duration of the trip, the season, and the activities. So travelers, even on short trips, might be at increased risk if they have extensive outdoor or nighttime exposure in rural areas during periods of active transmission, especially during the rainy season. Short-term travelers whose visits are restricted to major urban areas are at a low risk for JD. But my suggestion would be to visit a travel clinic at least a month before the trip. Yeah, good advice. All right, I wanted to thank you, Dr. Melvin Sanicus, for your time and expertise. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Robert.